नमस्ते प्रणाम गीता ध्यान ओ पार्थय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणन स्वयं व्यास ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्य महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायि अंबत्वासंदा भगवद्गीते भगवद्वेषिणी ओ भगवदगीता विद विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव इन लाइटमेंट टू अर्जुन द एंशंट सेज व्यास इंक्लूडेड इट इन द महाभारत ओ गॉड इज शॉवर ऑफ द नेक्टर लाइक नॉलेज ऑफ नॉन डिजम कंटेंट इन योर एटीन चैप्टर्स ओ माई अफेक्शनेट मदर द डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ री बर्थ आई मेडिटेट अपॉन दी कृष्णवंदना वसुदेव सुत कंस चाणूर मर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु सन ऑफ वसुदेव द स्लेयर ऑफ कंस एंड चाणूर एक्सट्रीम डिलाइट फॉर मदर देवकी ओ लॉर्ड कृष्ण द सुप्रीम टीचर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स माय सैल्यूटेशन टू यू श्रीमद्भगवद्गीता द एट्थ अध्याय अक्षर ब्रह्म योग एंड today is our 15th shloka yesterday we had uh, read that beautiful very short uh, 14th shloka where shri krishna told us uh, how i am easily attainable don't consider that i am i am very difficult to attain i am not durlabha i am sulabha i can be easily attained provided provided an anya chetaha satatam yo maam smarati nityashah without thinking anything else one who constantly thinks about mind every moment who constantly thinks about me and every day hmm not once in a while tasya aham sulabha for that person and how is that person that shri krishna has defined that person is nitya yuktasya yogina ever steadfast yogi to that ever steadfast yogi tasya aham sulabha partha o partha o arjuna i am easily attainable by such ever steadfast yogi now a question arises in mind what will happen when we attain the lord why is lord every time and then every now and then he is harping upon attain me the ultimate goal hmm? the uh, that here here he he had talk about uh, the the parama uh, gatim the the ultimate goal achieving the ultimate goal that is what he had uh, told us in the 13th shloka at the end of the 13th shloka and in the 14th shloka he had told us that he will reach me hmm? tasya aham sulabha why so what will happen if one attains the lord that now shri krishna is going to tell us in the 15th shloka and for that uh, uh, attainability of the lord how sulabha it is shri ramakrishna in that example in his teaching he has told us you take a step ahead you take a step forward towards lord lord will come 10 steps towards you it becomes that much easy so having attained the lord now what happens what is the benefit so that shri krishna is going to tell us in this 15th shloka mamu patya punar janma dukhal yam shashvatam नापनुवंती महात्मानः संसिद्धिं परमाम गताः माम उपत्य हैविंग अटेंड मी नाउ ही इज टेलिंग क्लियरली व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन द युक्त चेतसः योगिनः द एवर स्टेडफास्ट योगी अटेंस मी सो इजीली व्हाट हैपेंस आफ्टर अटेंडिंग मी माम उपत्य हैविंग अटेंड मी पुनर्जन्म द रीबर्थ दुखालय अशाश्वतम द पेन द पुनर्जन्म पुनर्जन्म इज 
I mean, it, it is that it starts with the pain. And Ashashvatam. It is non eternal. When we get this body, it is not that we come in this body, you know, forever to enjoy the, uh, the, the, the beauty, to enjoy the joys of the world permanently. It never happens. The moment the Jivatman takes birth in a body, the moment the Jivatman gets embodied in this limited periphery, limited uh, form, what happens? It gets converted to a temporary form. Some, some beings, maybe they will be living for a microseconds, minutes, days, weeks, hmm? months at the most, years. Like uh, the, 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 those small uh, microorganisms, the tiny uh, single cellular, uh, you know, life forms, beings, the microscopic beings. They may be enjoying that uh, birth uh, for, for a matter of a few hours and then that's it. Once that cell wall ruptures, that's the end of it. The life form just escapes that temporary form. As you grow higher, ev evolute in the higher order, maybe your longevity lengthens that's it but it is not shashvata it's not no no physical form is eternal it is only the atman the brahman the paramadivyam purusha that is uh, the, the, the permanent feature so the only shashvata is the Parama Divya Purusha. That is the Shashvata. Otherwise, everything else is a Shashvata. And the moment uh, it, it is a Punar Shanma, it is such a pain, isn't it? Pain for the child, pain for the mother. We, 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 we enter this uh, world with such a huge cry. Oh my God, I have again come here. Hmm. Look at me. And of course, that is our own deed, isn't it? We don't want the uh, final uh, liberation. We, we don't want the moksha, we don't want the nirvana and we keep on doing all sorts of things and finally we have to come back. And when we have to come back, it is Dukkhalaya. It, it is all, it is, it is a house of pain, it is a house of misery, it is a house of grief. Hmm? It, it is... Uh, uh, filled with grief, filled with misery, filled with pain, filled with uh, uh, agony. And not only that, it is also Ashashvatam. So, Mamupatya Punarjanma Dukkhalayam Ashashvatam Napnuvanti Mahatmanaha Sansiddhim Paramam Gataha. Napnuvanti. Napnuvanti is Na Apnuvanti. He doesn't get. What he does, who doesn't get? Mahatmanaha. The Mahatmas or the great souls, they don't get this uh, punarjan. They don't get this uh, the 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 uh, dukkhalayam. They don't have to dwell in this place of dukkhalayam. They don't have to dwell uh, in this place of misery and pain and agony. And they don't have to dwell in this place in this uh, form which is ashashvatam, which is so very temporary, so very fragile. Today it is there, tomorrow it isn't there. Now it is there, next moment it may not be there. Why to uh, tomorrow? So, na apnuvanti mahatmanaha sansiddhim paramankata. Sansiddhim is, they get attain perfection and they reach the highest. So that is what happens, Shri Krishna is telling in this 15th shloka when the yogi, he attains me. Having come to me, the great souls are no more subject to rebirth, which is transitory and the abode of pain, the abode of misery, the abode of grief, all the negatives, 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 
Hmm? So such great souls, they don't, they are no more subject to rebirth. For they have reached the highest perfection. Since San Siddhim Paramagataha, they don't have to come back. There is no Punarjanma, there is no uh, dwelling in that in this uh, Dukkhalaya. Now here again, Sri Krishna is talking the Dukkhalaya. Alaya is a home. This body, hmm? this body of nine openings, the Navatvara Puri, this is our Alaya. And this Alaya is filled with Dukkha, filled with misery and pain and grief and sorrows. Although we intend to get pleasure, we intend to get joy, we intend to get only the good things, ultimately we start realizing that it isn't so. So, if one has to avoid that Dukkha, if one has to avoid again and again getting into this Punarjanma, again and again coming back and dwelling in this Dukkhalaya, which is a Shashvata. The only remedy is attain the Lord. Hmm? And Sri Krishna had told us it is a Sulabha. It is not difficult at all. So, man gets whatever he has made himself worthy of. And this is one thing which uh, uh, always uh, we find in the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna and uh, Swami Vivekananda and Devarma. That we get what we deserve, nothing more, nothing less. We are responsible for whatever is happening in our life. We are responsible. We don't want liberation. We don't want to, we want to talk. We, we, we feel we should get nirvana, but we don't put an effort towards it. And the effort is not that very great, like Sri Krishna had said. All one has to do is 24 bar 7 every day, just think about the Lord. That's it. Now, we create our own miseries, we create our own pains, we create our own sorrows. In our effort, in our attempt, in our desires to attain pleasures. So whatever we do, we have to get it back, isn't it? So man gets whatever he has made himself worthy of. Nothing more, nothing less. We get what we deserve. The Lord gives himself over to the devotee worthy of him. And there is no gain greater than this. That's why Sri Ramakrishna says, take one step forward towards the Lord. Lord will come ten steps. You don't have to do much effort in that. Having gained God, the devotee is in eternal beatitude. That is the ultimate please. Because it is the anandam, it is the absolute please in that realm, having one, becoming one with the satchitanandam. That is the ultimate truth. That is the ultimate existence. That is the ultimate please. The wheel of birth and death does not touch him anymore. It is mukta. It is uh, ever the, 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 uh, that tiny soul gets into the realm of becoming ever free. No more. Uh, even if that soul comes down, just, just a matter of uh, a little effort and it's free again. So, <coughs> the wheel of birth and death does not touch him anymore. He doesn't have to come down again and again and again and experience all those miseries and pains and sorrows and dukkha. That is what happens. Now, in, on, on, on this particular thing, uh, I, let, let me tell about uh, how, how are these kind of uh, beings, those who are ever free, now, Sri Ramakrishna has categorized, uh, you know, these uh, the beings in four types. There is one, ever free. That ever free is Nitya Jeeb. The that, that being may come, take birth, but it, 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 that, that being doesn't get uh, in, into that uh, phase of uh, be, be, being embodied in a Dukkhalaya. 
for that jeeb, for that being. It is just experiencing once again the beatitude, the bliss of the Lord. For that, these nitya mukta, these ever free nitya souls, they come down. There is another category, mukta. They are not as, uh, you, you know, free as the nitya, as ever free souls. But they have done quite a lot. They don't get trapped in the net. The moment they see the fisherman's net being spread in the pond, these are the type of fish that Sri Ramakrishna always used to give an example of four jivas. These fish, they see the net is coming and they just... You know, they escape from getting trapped in the net. Those are the free souls. They, they, do, they don't get caught in the net at all. Although they may not be the perfect souls, they may not be the ever free souls like the Nitya Jivas. But they don't get trapped. The moment the net comes, the Nitya, they, their net doesn't reach them at all. They are beyond the uh, grasp of the net. But then, if, even the uh, muktachi, the free souls, they see the net coming and they make way, their way out, not to get trapped. The mumukshus, hmm, they get trapped and their efforts start to get out of that net. They are the strugglers. And of those mumukshus, Maybe one among the millions, he will find a way out. Others, they have to again come and restart the journey. It is not that uh, they, 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 their efforts in that phase of life, they get wasted. Sri Krishna has told us that the efforts never get wasted. In the next birth, it again starts, but then one has to again experience that Ashashvata form, which is a Dukkhalaya, till the final escape. And then there are those bound souls. They are so much attacked, attached to this worldly life. In spite of knowing fully well they are trapped, hmm, they don't accept the fact that they are trapped. They say, I am free, I am very fine. And, in, and in, on the contrary, what they do? They dig themselves further deep into the catching that net in their mouth, those fish. They will further dig deep down into the mud, further getting, uh, you know, uh, embedded in that net. No effort to get free. And they feel, I am so safe. I don't have to worry about, but they don't know. It is just a matter of the fisherman pulling up the net and that is the end. And again, the cycle starts. So, there we have that. Uh, uh, Shri Krishna says that once you attain me, you don't have to come back at all. There is no Punar Janma, there is no Dukkhalaya, that, that experiencing that uh, temporary phase, O Shashvata. Instead, it is Sansiddhim Paramam Gata. That, that is the highest uh, uh, you know, achievement a Baddha Jiva can get of total liberation, total emancipation. So that was the 15th shloka of uh, the Akshara Brahma Yoga. And uh, what is uh, the difference between this wheel of birth and death, the Punar Janma and the eternal beatitude that Sri Krishna will tell us in the next 16th shloka that, that uh, we will take up uh, in our next reading. Till then, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Krishna Arpanamastu Jai Sri Ramakrishna Jai Thakur Jai Ma Jai Swamiji